Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeeds, and in today's video, we're going to be going over and scoring our practice FRQ for Unit 7. Before we do that though, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications because the exam is just four weeks away and I have tons of review videos and live stream events coming up to help you get ready. All right, today's FRQ submission comes to us from an ape scholar named Hannah. So thank you, Hannah, for sending in your responses and allowing us to learn from them. As always, the scoring guide for this FRQ is down in the video description below. So in letter A, Hannah unfortunately misidentified Big Bend as the park that had the greatest loss of visibility instead of Sequoia National. Park. Now, unlike the low visibility in Sequoia National Park, I had no trouble finding all the points in Hannah's response for Part B. She earned all four possible points in this section of the FRQ. In Parts 1 and 3, she earned two points by clearly identifying NOx and ozone as primary and secondary air pollutants, respectively. In Part 2, she correctly described that primary air pollutants are emitted directly from processes such as the incomplete combustion of fossil fuels. And in Part 4, she earned another point for correctly describing how secondary air pollutants form when a primary air pollutant reacts with the sun and gases in the atmosphere. In question C part one, Hannah correctly calculated the increase in visibility from 1990 to 2015 as an 80% increase, earning her another point. Now just a quick note here that this is an abnormal calculation prompt in the sense that it didn't offer a point for the correct setup with units. Remember that on your exam, calculation points will be worth two points and will require correct setup with units in order to earn one of those two points. In part two of question C, Hannah was really close to earning this electric vehicle point from the rubric, but she just needed to provide a specific benefit that the government could offer to people who purchase electric vehicles, such as a tax credit. Now I can tell you from my own experience grading exams for the College Board and reading the scoring commentary for questions like this, students always struggle to identify specific actions that governments can take. If we check out the scoring commentary here, we can see that words like mandate, tax, or subsidize are all great examples of specific government actions as long as there's a clear target for that action, such as mandating that nearby utilities switch from burning coal to using wind or solar energy. Now, the second response Hannah provided was just a little bit too unrealistic since reducing the number of people that visit the park runs counter to the overall goals of the national park system. In part D, Hannah was again really close to earning two points, but was just a touch off on both of her answers. Her first answer lacks the clarification that high foot traffic that she's talking about is off trail foot traffic since high visitor traffic on designated walkways wouldn't damage plants. She also made a slight mistake in identifying secondary consumers as relying on plants for food rather than primary consumers. And in her second answer, Hannah was so, so close to earning the noise pollution point from the rubric, but communication just wasn't precise enough of an animal behavior. We can see from the rubric that she would have needed to identify a slightly more specific action that's disrupted by noise pollution, such as mating or foraging. Now, even with these slight missteps in parts C and D on this FRQ, Hannah still earned a five Five out of 10, which was higher than the average on this FRQ in 2019, and a score that would have her in good shape to get either a three or a four on that exam in May, depending on her multiple choice scores. Now this sample response from Hannah is a great reminder of why it's so important to go back and check your work with any extra time that you have after you've written your answers. Look, I know you're gonna be tempted to close your test booklet and rest your eyes after that grueling process of writing three FRQs back to back to back, but resist that urge and instead scan your FRQs for slight mistakes that you might've made, such as the visibility mistake in part A or the lack of specificity of details in part D. If you end up finding a couple extra points on each of your FRQs, it could be the difference between earning a four and a five on your exam. Now that we've scored our practice of our Q for unit seven, let's take a look ahead at our practice of our Q for unit eight. Now, since this is a release question from before the course and exam redesign in 2019, this FRQ is from the previous exam format where question number one always paid homage to this fictitious town of Fremont, often in the form of a newspaper clipping such as this. So I'm not gonna read the newspaper clipping to you, but you can pause the video now and read it and then move on to see the annotation process for the questions. So in letter A, we start off with a describe prompt. So I'm gonna circle that and write a two above it. And what we're describing are two effects that ingesting microbeads have on aquatic organisms. Our target here has to be an effect of ingesting microbeads and the frame is aquatic organisms. They have to be suffering the effects from ingesting these microbeads. In part B, we're asked about the difference between the threat posed by nitrates and microbeads. So we have another describe prompt, so let's circle describe minute two next to it. And what we need to describe is how nitrate levels can negatively affect water quality in some aquatic ecosystems. So I'm gonna underline that word how, because that means we need a process. And we need a process about how nitrate levels are negatively affecting water quality in some aquatic ecosystems. Now in letter C, we have three identified prompts. So I'm gonna circle each of those and write a one next to it just to remind myself that these are simple, straightforward, one phrase answers. In part one, we need to identify one way that large pieces of plastic 
are removed from wastewater during primary treatment. So specifically, how during primary treatment do we remove large pieces of plastic? Now in part two, we're asked about disinfecting wastewater. So what we need to identify is a technique that's commonly used to disinfect wastewater. Again, we have to make sure that our phrase or our statement here is a technique for disinfecting wastewater. And finally, in part three, we're asked about sludges and biosolids that are produced during the wastewater treatment process being spread on agricultural fields. Again, this is an identify, but what we're identifying is one advantage and one disadvantage of this practice that's been described. So we have to identify an advantage and a disadvantage, and they are advantages and disadvantages of taking these sludges or biosolids and spreading them on agricultural fields. And finally, in part D, we have a provide. Provides kind of like identify, so I'm gonna write a one next to it. And what we're providing is a reason why mangrove trees specifically are being removed by humans. So we need to make sure that our answer is a reason that mangrove trees would be removed by humans. And finally, in part two, we have an identify. So I'm gonna circle that and write a one next to it. And what we're identifying is an ecosystem service. That's really key. Our answer has to be an ecosystem service and it has to be provided by mangrove ecosystems. All right, for those of you keeping score at home, that was our eighth FRQ Friday prompt, which means that we have just one more unit to go. With the exam just a few weeks away, it's more important than ever that you're setting a 23 minute timer when you write these practice FRQs. I can't stress enough how critical it is that you get used to the exam pacing so that you can quickly annotate and write quality FRQ answers while the clock is ticking. And remember that if you want your practice FRQ scored in our next FRQ Friday video, make sure to email or snail mail it to me. All right, Ape Scholars, thanks for tuning in today and good luck as you get ready for these exams. As always, think like a mountain and write like a scholar.